Hola community, welcome everybody to another episode of Blender Today slash Every Day. In this quarantine edition, uh, Corona edition, we are hanging out and learning about what's new in Blender, but mainly about what people are doing on their everyday using Blender. Today, I got another three guests. At some point, I'm going to run out of people from the community to, to hang out with. But until then, who cares? But today, I'm going to have two artists, one developer, two are working at the Blender Studio, the animation studio, um, as a um, the developer. I'm gonna have the Manta Flow uh, hero. It's Sebas, Sebastian Barsic. So, Sebas, how are you? Can hey. I hear you? Hello. Hello, hey, Paolo. How are Hello. you? How are you doing? Doing fine. So, I'm you are fine. the the face of Mantaflow and physics lately in Blender. So it's awesome to have you here. We have some kind of technical side. Uh, so we are we are safe. Oh. We don't say too much, <laughs> too many wrong things. You're also going to cover other parts of Blender and uh, physics related, right? For... Yeah, that, that's actually the plan, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess everyone has seen the um, Blender 2020 projects already. And um, yeah, the plan was for me to move over to the hair project. Um, and yeah, I mean, the hair project is like a sub project of the um, three new object types yeah. in Blender. And while I'm going to work on the hair project, I also would like to work on the like the volumes that Brecht implemented and volumes. make them work nightly, nicely, uh, nicely with the um, with the new fluid system. Wow. So, yeah. So everything is getting together. Amazing. Yeah. But physics wouldn't be would be nothing without guests, without artists, right? So here we have directly from very nearby another Amsterdamer. It's a uh, an um Andy Goralchik here. It's live. Hey, hello, hello there, Pablo. Hello, how are you? Are you at home? <laughs> I'm I'm doing fine. I think I'm one floor, no, a couple of floors below you. Currently. We live very close by. We could literally just yeah. get together. But uh, no, you shouldn't. You should stay home and uh, do amazing things. You're still working, right? Every day, just a regular, just from home office, basically. Exactly. We um, Francesco made sure that we all get our computers and our workstation at home. And uh, like we have all the technical things sorted out currently. It's the second week that we're actually doing this. And uh, yeah, so far, so far it's going very, very well. We're still working on our film project, Coffee Run, yes. um, which hopefully in a couple of weeks it will be done. But uh, couple yeah. Couple of weeks. I have done as in publish, as in live? Um, published, I, I don't think so currently. I mean, there's still some uh, technicalities we have to sort out. Um, but I think the main bulk of work, like uh, lighting and rendering, uh, will be done in a couple of weeks, maybe in a month. I don't know. Depends how things are going. Depends on things are going. The farm is mm -hmm. still going, I guess. I mean, the studio is it's there. The farm is not yeah, sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the studio is going, and in theory, the farm is uh, is going as well. But the current wor uh, project we're working on is uh, actually done in Eevee most of the time. Ooh. And so we're actually not doing any farm work. Like in theory, I can render this whole thing on my workstation here. And of course, there are some other things uh, like we're actually using all the render engines that are possible <laughs> in Blender. We're using Workbench to output like uh, ambient occlusion and cavity shading. Sure. We're using Cycles for Cryptomat and for uh, for object IDs and everything. And then we're using Eevee for the lighting and the beauty pass and everything. Um, and it's a very uh, NPR based project. So there's a lot of uh, like there's a lot of fakery going on. And it's very um, you know. Like you tweak exactly the colors how you want to have them on the screen um, uh, based on the the artwork that we have. So it's wow. it's you... super non fear photorealistic. So do you plan to add like some grease pencil on top of it? Just I mean while you're at it. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. Why not <laughs> everything? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so this is what you're working on at the moment, and we have other guests not from Amsterdam this time. We have all the way from Sweden. We have. One and only 
that he's been teasing at with with teasing us with with demos and EV and he's just showing things that we didn't even know that was possible. We have all the way from Sweden, Daniel Bystead. Hello, Daniel. Hey, Pablo. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> it's good. It's good. Um, sick kids working from home. You know, like everyone else. Yeah. But yeah, still having a regular like work life and you get to do Blender stuff, but maybe it's harder with yeah, the kids yeah, around. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't have a, as much time right now as I usually have, but um, yeah, I can't wait to do some more personal Blender stuff. Oh. After, uh, yeah, because yeah. you still have your day job, I guess, as <laughs> normal. Right yeah, 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 exactly. Family and day job, so it's like uh, you know, kind of squeeze in Whisking a little together. bit of uh, personal uh, projects uh, in the evening. In the evening. So besides your art projects, you also now are gonna contribute in um, like giving feedback and more, getting more closer with the developers, right? Regarding hair. Yes. That it's so exciting. So you know yeah. how how uh, I don't know sculpt gets better because uh, people and Pablo Duaro gets feedback on sculpting, but also Chris Pencil got better because uh, the artists uh, Matias and Daniel are helping out the developers and inspiring. Well, now we got a victim to <laughs> to <laughs> take care of the hair and grooming, and also I think Andy will be amazing if you can have some input. You've been uh, suffering with hair uh, simulations for so <laughs> long. Yeah, uh, uh, suffering, I mean, suffering for the greater good, of course. And I think uh, at some point, hopefully, like now, we can uh, we can get started on a new hair system. So all this suffering will be worth uh, something. Will be worth something. <laughs> I, wow. would even say, I would even say that at this point that we have the new particle system coming up, there is also no, no way around it anymore. We need to have a new hair system. Like, there's no way around it. There's no way around it, so... Wow. So in, in, and Daniel, do you have some um, ideas in particular? Because you work a lot with uh, other software, right? Um, oh, oh, yeah. I mean, at work, uh, we do a lot of uh, grooming, both like human hairstyles and, you know, animals, that kind of thing. So uh, I'm, I've actually been using Blender quite a lot, even though we're not uh, rendering per se in Blender. It's like amazing uh, the kind of like representation of hair you get in the viewport now with Eevee. So it's it's kind of my go-to grooming software. So uh, currently in the projects where we use Houdini, I just you know export the hair from Blender as an alembic and then plug it into you know Houdini. So it's like <laughs> super easy to just like do the final stuff in Houdini with the nodes and then we render. Yeah. Wow. So wow. nodes is gonna be a big part of this new system. You think? Uh Oh yeah, I mean, um, they design the, it with the nodes in mind because of this part of the particle nodes slash everything nodes. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the the whole idea with the first implementation and the first milestone is to implement uh, a node system, and I think that's really what's been, um, you know, lacking the most with uh, with Blender's grooming system because, you know, rendering in Eevee is amazing and the grooming tools are actually really good. So just getting nodes in there is going to, you know, lift the you know, bar yeah. uh, quite high. Yeah, and I think we also part of the tools, right? Because one of the nodes just so like, well, what do you even use nodes for? For example, like shading, for grooming, for actually uh, like um, spawning some particles in certain parts or for the management or for like for grooming, <laughs> like you need a good brush system, I would say. I'm uh, ignorant yeah. in this side. Yeah, well, it's mostly like you you create a sparse set of uh, guide uh, curves. I mean, uh, ah, yeah. mostly in in all uh, grooming systems, and then you just um, uh, scatter a lot of uh, curves that are going to be the curves that are rendered as hair. And um, you know, grooming each hair strand would be like super cumbersome. So that's why you need nodes so you can like you know uh, scraggle or clump and things like that. And uh, yeah, just having nodes is a great way of painting, you know, kind of with br uh, broad brush strokes where yeah. you can change a lot of stuff at once, basically. Wow, yeah, and all the settings that we have right now in the particles <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, could become yeah, exactly. nodes, more easy to understand. Yes. 
that it's awesome so it's good that we have both the uh, side of the you know we have andy that worked on it since before there was even hair in blender <laughs> so all oh, yeah. the iterations all the iterations and you you even like you groomed big pack bunny so i, can I imagine. think so yeah that was actually the first uh the first real hair system that that was ever Im implemented was on big Buck bunny almost 13 years ago 12, now 13 yeah 13 years can't ago. believe how long yeah. Okay, so we are, <laughs> and probably most of the system is already like the sculpting of the the grooming. I think hasn't changed that much even. It's pretty much the same, yeah. Eek. Okay, so nice. We have some <laughs> somewhere to start. So um, there is a task like where people can follow. There is not just words around. There is a uh, task on, if I'm not wrong, in uh, Fabricator with the website, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, yeah. Where we can read about it. It's in uh, developer.blender.org to, to read more of the details. You're gonna have to give me the here physics, is it? Now it's in physics. I think I even have the task. Oh, if you have the task number, you can even give it to me. New hair book, object type. It's T68981. That's where I am. Thank you. So here, commissioner, Daniel Bicet, project leader, Sebas, and members. Just and everybody actually who wants to follow you can be a subscriber you can just uh follow here but so use cases existing hair editing possibilities yes a node and modifier based hair object to replace the existing system no new functionalities at first so basically it just replace everything that's possible with the new stuff you already have something in mind you have a, a roadmap even i guess with the uh, still manta flow being so new you still have a ton of work yeah yeah i mean um for me, I mean, this project is like in the early, early stages. So um, uh, I would see it's similar to what was Brecht doing with the volume type. Yeah. We have the milestone one that should lay the foundation for um, the modifiers that come on top of it later on. Um, and yeah, that's basically what will hopefully start in the next month. So in the summer, probably, um, because right now I'm still Figuring and figuring out all the fluid bugs, and uh, also have some tasks for the OpenVDB um, volume object that need to be done. And oh. so, yeah, I mean, this, uh, this is like the outline of the project. Awesome. So, uh, Daniel, on your side of the, um, um, I saw before you had like the the, the tiger. Right. Oh As yeah, a, yeah. Open blend file open over there. So, what would you like? What's a, a tool that you think that it could be improved? What What would make your life easier in that? And then we can all, you also see Spring if you have it around there, Andy. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna try to make it work. Because there's so <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> because there's two completely different uh, styles, right? One is a long hair, and uh, it's more of a traditional, but also has loose hairs here, and it has a little thing is dangling around. Yeah. Uh, but then we I would also say, have a, yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, doing hairstyles uh, is the most difficult thing. Like, uh, I mean, not not to say it's easy, but furry animals, that's uh, that's pretty like that's a pretty standard thing. But then, like, if you have very elaborate hair braids and like different types of grooming, and you have different patches in different areas that you have to uh, like that have you know that you really have to. Have, have a barber sit and craft <laughs> everything like those are super super, super difficult hard. the problem yeah, with, with uh, sorry but with animals i had is like short hair that make it look good that is very mm. hard right I well i mean uh, i agree with andy actually it's like um the the longer the hair is and the more style it is uh the more complicated it is to you know make it look good there are um certain and and it's not just you know grooming the basic uh, direction of the hair and you know the shape but it's also that like the final stuff where you need the uh, kind of overlap of uh, hair so in a lot of uh, cg humans you see this where you have especially with long hair where where the the hair strands just point in the same directions and and it gets very much you know that kind of cg look to it um yeah. So that's something to to work on. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Actually, so, hmm? sorry. Sorry. Um, I have a question to you guys. Um, 
like uh, I've see, I see I'm seeing also a lot of people in the chat say uh, like uh, they like take Yeti as an example in Maya. Have you guys uh, checked out what Weta Digital has been doing like with Planet of the Apes and like with their wig system because that looks also super interesting where um, they take less of a guide curve approach but they actually um, they allocate all the rendering of the hair onto the GPU, which like you can just fire, like stack a whole bunch of really powerful GPUs on your computer. And then um, what they do is that they actually put all the hair on to the model and you don't have any more guide curves. And uh, instead what you actually get is very, very powerful tools that let you craft and like uh, comb all the hairs on a, on a very high resolution level have you guys actually checked that out like there's a bunch of videos there i have not and um, yeah I, it, it sounds sounds interesting um, it sounds super in, uh, like render intensive but i think what it's what is interesting about it is that the artist like actually has to work very hands-on like they have very uh very uh, sophisticated combing tools and uh, brushing and frizzing and that kind of effects um, but yeah, there's no, there's no, uh, node manipulation or no mathematical, uh, changing of things. It's all kind of very physical, which I find very, very interesting. Mm. For physics, that would be a nightmare, I guess, to have too many real uh, hairs. Maybe there, there needs to be some kind of curved guides, I guess. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they have some kind of guide based system on top of that, that, uh, that, um, deforms everything. Um, so yeah, I don't know anything about the, I only know what, like what we see from the, the, the effects reels and, uh, the, their technology websites and that kind of stuff. Perhaps Looks very Weta, interesting. Perhaps Weta want to contribute to the Blender. Yeah, maybe they're watching. Oh, maybe. <laughs> Hello, Weta. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to agree with you, Andy, because, um, the node system, and this is also something that, um, especially Jack and we've been struggling a lot is to find uh, a, a good way for artists to to deal with those nodes because in the end you might have a huge node network and it's so not intuitive for the artist at some point if it becomes so too big and you need to have like like a more 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 intuitive approach so yeah Wow. Yeah, that that could actually go hand in hand with um, you know the everything nodes and the asset management uh, projects. Um, I don't know the full extent to the asset management project, but uh, imagine if you have a complicated node network that someone sets up and kind of expose certain parameters for the artist, you would get more of a simplified version for um, the artist. Uh, you know where you just push and pull a couple of parameters uh, instead of having a very complicated network. Yeah. But I think that, you know, working at an uh, at a studio with a lot of artists and you, you kind of have different assets that go from artist to artist and you have to finish up someone else's grooming, it's always really important to make sure that your, you know, network is readable and uh, clean. It's super easy for especially, you know, nodes to yeah, yeah. get really messy really fast yep. as well. So that's, I mean, that's actually one of the uh, positive things with having, you know, the way the, that that um, Blender grooming system works right now with all the settings in a specific way. Uh, it's always the same, uh, which makes it more readable, but it's also more, you know, set in stone, so you can't really uh, change Go crazy, yeah. that much. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I've never seen this I mean, one. As, as a developer, I would even say that there should be some um, auto-generated um, mechanism that like cleans up the, the nodes or that puts an abstraction layer on top of it so that you don't see everything that's going on below. So, I don't know, maybe. Like presets. I mean that yeah, it's complex, yeah. but under the hood, it's already done for you. And maybe also the way Houdini is doing it right now, because they also like what I've seen is that they also have some um, abstraction layers that 
you can expand if you want to. So you can look into deeper into the node network, but you don't have to. Yeah. Um, that's at some point, I think, uh, something that we will have to implement. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's a, a good approach. I think, I mean, Houdin is, um, you can really get down into, you know, the, the specific data of, you know, putting a, you know, specific color or a string even on a specific vertex or a point. Um, and it can easily become very, you know, uh, it's, it's a threshold that you have to get over that is quite hard. If you're an artist, you have to spend a lot of time getting into the whole workflow. But once it's there, you know, it's, it's a nice way of working. Yeah. But I think that would be nice to have nodes, but more approachable for Blender artists. So it's, uh, and I think that, you know, having presets and things like that would, uh, yeah, would be a way of making it more approachable for artists. Well. Ev everywhere, everything that it's in Blender right now needs presets. Everything takes from cycles, uh, shaders, even like we need, we need presets for so much. So Andy, did you yes. manage to open the, the spring file? Is it even uh, working? Yeah, I do. Um, uh, let me a... share my screen. Yeah, I hope I hope uh, I hope <laughs> I can get it to work. It's been a while since I actually edited this file, and I've oh, um, just to see a, a different. This, even though this is my work computer, um, I don't think I can actually groom in real time. And actually, I have to like as a disclaimer, um, Spring has been uh, sculpted and modeled and. Uh, combed entirely in Blender 279. So <gasps> what? this is kind of, there's kind of a legacy going on there because um, yeah, we were switching Blender versions in the middle of the project. So after all the character modeling has been finished um, and the rigging has been more or less done, yeah. we had to flip everything over to 2.8. And then yeah, all the all the grooming was done thankfully at that, that point because at that point we didn't have uh, the whole modifier stack working and uh, copy on write was a huge issue but it worked so, like yeah. the, the the passage from <laughs> from 2.7 uh, to 2.8 so oh uh, yeah it does yeah. so for example what do you think it could what what, what was the most uh, toughest part of the grooming of spring and how would you think it could mm -hmm. be better with better tools with notes with uh... all right let let me just uh, break it down for you guys to see uh, how spring um, made how this all works. I have to delete a bunch of drivers because otherwise I can't unhide anything. Uh, let me just save. Okay. So Oof, I, I'll just, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> this will get a little bit freaky. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, here we go. Wow. Smigol, um, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Gollum, Gollum. All right. I'll just make the, make the particle panel super big so you guys can see it. I hope this works. So what we, uh, how this is constructed? Well, first of all, um, uh, there's, couple, there's a couple of different objects um, that have hair. There's the main head mesh, and uh, that actually emits all the particles off her uh, head. But then there's additional, sorry, this gets more freaky, <laughs> but then there's additional um, emitters for the sides and additional emitters for the eyebrows and the eyelashes and then the ponytail in the back. And um, most of the time during production, we actually tried so that uh, we we rig the hair objects separately from the meshes. So we get a little bit more control over how we make the hair deform versus the, the mesh geometry deforms. And uh, yeah, so the main, the main hair is just on her on her head mesh, which gave us a bunch of issues, but oh well, we had to deal with it. There's like the base layer, which just covers everything with hair, so you don't see anything. Like you don't see any. Just any is very skin. dense. Yeah, it could have done done with a texture, but uh, for whatever reason, we didn't actually do that. And then um, there is the, the main braid layer, and uh, let me actually up the the child particles a little bit. Okay, so maybe you can see a little better here. Um, what what I kind of rediscovered, quote unquote, uh, for Spring was uh, the uh, the simple parents, because uh, for most of the time, 
before on projects I worked with uh, with interpolated parents and um, on Spring, since we have a lot of braids and stuff that uh, you know um, adheres to the parent curve quite a bit, we uh, we use simple parents quite a lot. Um, so these the the base braids are just the yeah. Let me just flip the radius. So they're just uh, these parent hairs, uh, which. Um, spawn a bunch of children's and they follow the parent curve. I hope that makes sense. Kind of, yes. Yeah, and then there is uh, an additional layer for the braids on the side. And uh, those are just... These are the ones that we see, like the, the main ones, like the hero braids in the front. Yeah, yeah it's, the, it's the... Yeah, this is just those. Yeah, I'm kind of toggling them on and off here, I hope. You yeah, guys yeah, can yeah. see that. And uh, those are also just simple. So uh, no, the interpolation basically means that they follow the, the, head, uh, the ba head base geometry. And simple just means very, very stupidly um, follow the parent particle curve, um, but keep some distance to it. And the distance is a little bit randomized, and there's some roughness to it, and uh, uh, some, some kinking, <laughs> actually no kinking going on. Um, so those are the side braids, and those were just individually sculpted uh, using. Uh, uh, maybe I can actually show that. Just showing uh, using particle edit mode. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Side braids. So there is an improvement we can. <laughs> And then what? What else? Then you have some some messy ones. These are just for like little strands that make it. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Th those are the like those are the parent hairs, and uh, then there is just uh, messy stuff on top of it. Also handmade. So, yeah, like everything is handmade and kind of hand aligned, and uh, yeah, and what gives it this. Uh, kind of random effect is just um, some roughness, like some uniform roughness uh, and some roughness along the like the, the random coordinates of this. Do you think, uh, did, were you limited by Blender settings at some point? Where like, oh, I wish I had nodes or I wish I had... Oh yeah, totally. I mean... <laughs> um, <laughs> and you work at the Blender stupid. Animation Studio, you see? Like it's not uh, yeah, with, yeah. With every dream came. Okay. <laughs> it comes through in there. Um, well, I mean, the like the hair system, you have to realize, even though it's it's great that it's there at all, um, it's kind of a, a weird Frankenstein of what has been there uh, since Big Buck Bunny. And then there were some, some features tacked on top of it. And then like during open projects, uh, the developers got to fix something. And then actually a whole lot of, uh, a lo whole lot of features were added during Cosmos Laundromat for, uh, for using like for making the sheep hair and Victor's hair. Um, so all the, the different types of uh, clumping and roughness along curves uh, was added during was added during Gooseberry. And I think those actually caused a lot of legacy issues because now we actually have to support those weird hacks and everything. So um, I think for those type of effects, like roughness and randomization on top of hair, um, we it would actually would actually be super helpful to have some kind of node based system. You also groomed uh, um, Victor, right, from Cosmos. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah. And that is a whole other challenge. Wow. Yeah, sure. I was thinking another aspect of hair grooming is um, you know grooming for games as well. Um, yeah. I mean the current uh, way to go about doing um, game hair is. Uh, using hair cards. I know that uh, Unreal is also working on a new uh, solution, but I mean, the go-to workflow is still uh, hair cards. And I actually did a um, presentation on that a bit back here in Stockholm. And it's fascinating because there's actually some really nice, do you want to see my screen for yes. a second? Please share. Okay, it's gonna... We're just gonna find. We're looking button. at your art station. Super awesome. 
Ah, oh, thank you. Let's see, entire. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so I'm just going to check it out and do the show the presentation thing I did. Oops. Oh. Have to just uh, present mode. Okay. So, yeah. So, this is actually the. Oh, whoops. Okay. Yeah, so this is actually the current grooming system uh, and just using hair cards and deforming those instead of uh, having actual hair. Mm. Just a hair cord. And, yeah, and you can actually, so the texture are um, basically uh, baked in a separate file. But once you have that, it's, um, yeah, it's super convenient. It's sort of like this, you know, as a classic way of creating hair. But I do it um, with this sort of grid. And then in the node editor, it's possible to just um, use randomization so you get a random uh, hair <laughs> hair card texture um, depending so uh, imagine that all of the uh, geometry islands are uh, you know having vertex colors from black to white then you can have randomization like this where you uh, kind of pick a certain part of the texture and put it on the uh, uh, hair cards and I think s something like this would also be very interesting to implement in the new hair system so it's uh, you can get sort of like the hair curves and alignment and rotation of the hair curves uh, sorry the hair cards uh, along uh, the growth mesh because it feels like in general there is no not really a fast or very good solution anywhere for uh, working with uh, hair and for games and different yeah. software. You make it look so like it's much easier to control. It sounds like let's panic. <laughs> it's more like, okay, I want, it's more under control. It looks. Yeah, it's nice. And um, yeah, I, I was actually surprised when I tried to set this up that it's, um, it's, it's, yeah, with the current uh, tool set in Blender, it's pretty easy to do. Once you just figure it out. Yeah, it doesn't look like Blender at all. Like, what do you, if you <laughs> tell me like that, that was made in Blender, and I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah. All right, sorry. Awesome. I'm just going to switch over this to you. This looks super again. cool. Yeah. Thanks. Super awesome. All right. Um, I do uh, think we can already move into the questions. Remember, guys, this is live. We are streaming live. So we have some questions that people have been asking. Um, it's on blender.community on this community website here 31 comments okay so okay we got some something to go through uh let's start let's i i hope all the most of the questions are related to physics so we can keep it on uh, more uh, topic based i'll try to to filter hi pablo and guests i was wondering what is the future of physics in blender it's awesome uh, in specific, what are the plans on expanding a list of solvers for cloth, rigid body, fluids, uh, etc.? Is it a higher priority to improve the existing ones? I guess, uh, Sebas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, higher priority? So for, um, in terms of adding more solvers, solvers um, so right now I don't have any plans, for example, to add another fluid solver. I think that would just add more complexity. Um, for the cloth solver, there were, or well, there was some 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 research go, research going on um, to find a replacement. Um, but in the end, I think the what it comes down to is always that you have to find um, a solver. Like if you if you have a project on on GitHub that you want to add to Blender. Um, you always have to make sure that you have the the support, or that you have that this project is still supported. Yeah, and that um, it's not abandoned for a specific reason. Like for example, um, there are a lot of research projects out there, and you might come across them and don't know that the funding dried out for the project. And then. Yeah. Like, these are the kind of things that you have to make 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 sure before before adding it before adding more i'd rather have the ones that are already yeah. there um improved 
and working well and then add on top the the other ones yeah, yeah. next uh question cobra um oh yeah there is actually uh, to add to that what about unifying the solvers um I, again i guess it's also complexity adds complexity yeah i mean uh, in theory it would be would be awesome to have just a single physics solver that can do everything but as far as i know that does not exist right now so you have to um work with a mashup of different uh, solvers and try to make it um, as seamlessly as possible to the, to the user so that it looks like as if it was just one solver. Yeah. Um, and that's also one of the ideas that we had in mind with the Everything Nodes project. That in the end, it's just this one system and just you can one. air fluid and maybe the, the fluid interacts with the air and physics yeah, so. and everything nodes literally everything nodes okay next yes. uh, question hi this is more of a rigging question so i don't know if it relates to that but let's go through it uh how do guys how do you guys rig a character with multiple parts the problem is that if you have different armature modifiers on high resolution meshes that impacts performance also having armature as a self-contained object from other objects is really restricting wouldn't it be better to make them on the same global level like other dccs <laughs> Uh, I guess, uh, yeah, you know, more, I, Daniel. Yeah, I think. I mean, uh, it's it's always easier to when you're working in production and you need to transfer hair between different characters or use it. It's always easier to have um, like a hair cap, so you have an invisible mesh on the head <laughs> of uh, a character, and then you can just pull that out and put on, you know, ten other characters, that kind of thing, um, and the way you would go about like copying, basically, it's it's pretty easy. You just copy the modifiers uh, if it's a uh, bound to a skeleton, like an armature, and you just copy the weights. Basically, it gets a bit more tricky if you have, um, for instance, uh, like eyebrows, eyebrows. Then, if you have a lot of shape keys. Um, <laughs> That is usually not driven by uh, the armature itself, but you know sculpted uh, shapes, and then you would need to transfer those shape keys over to the the, the mesh that is uh, where the eyebrows are scattered from, and that adds a whole lot of complexity. And there there are add-ons and stuff like that that where you can transfer uh, shape keys and things. But it would also be nice to have as a tool in in Blender itself. Yeah, yeah. I think the question also say about the performance. Yeah, it, it impacts performance to have different objects. So I'd rather have less objects. Uh, but I think that's not even related to the fact that an armature is a self-contained object. I think the armature being a self-contained object actually helps with making rigs more stable. I always hear that uh, Maya, for example, doesn't have. Um, has like uh, bones are their own thing, like different objects. They don't have a container. Yes. And I always hear rigs breaking. <laughs> so what <laughs> is it true? I I I don't know. That's what I hear. I never tried that uh, so far myself, so I can't really say it. But I uh, I heard that actually having an armature as a container of bones, it's a good thing to have because you it's an object by itself. So you can have modifiers, can have a lot of uh, benefits also for organizing. Next uh, question, James asks, Hi guys, I thought I would get this question early. Do you think it would be possible for Blender to have some sort of shell and finning mechanism for fur, similar to to, to those that can be written in C++? Shell and finning. Shell and finning mechanism. I'm not familiar with that. Do you guys familiar? Maybe it's more technical. Sebas, have you ever heard? Does it basically mean that you have some kind of shell geometry and then you grow the hair inside that, maybe? Maybe. Ah. But it sounds like it, but I, I'm not familiar with the concept. I mean, I think that like for hair, uh, actually for hair styles, that would be super cool. And uh, also for other things that are not hair related. I, I, but I think that that whole thing ties into the everything notes uh domain because once you have a node to you can make a node to do anything so yeah it would be super helpful yeah. in that regard 
for example, if you have, let's say you have a tree, you have tree branches and they're also growing inside a mesh and they have some kind of dependency with, with other object. Would be super cool. That would be super cool. And yeah, that it that yeah. fits with everything now, it's, right? Like fitting all kinds of object data types with each other and being affected by one another. I think yeah. currently in Blender there is this I, there's this cutting mesh option which is still there from Gooseberry. I I don't think I've ever used it, but you can actually have another mesh that's cutting the uh, the parent hairs in edit mode. So you basically say you're 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 sculpting, you're grooming your your parent hairs, and then uh, you say that this mesh cuts that hair, and then you press a button and they disappear or whatever. I think that's there currently. Ah. But nothing very sophisticated. Not very. Thank you. Next question by Damian Winichenko. Hi, Pablo, Daniel, Andy, and Sebastian. You rock, guys. I know that it's almost senseless to expect something like position based particle simulation or finite element method implementing in Blender in the nearest feature, future. Although there are some little improvements that could make complex setups much easier with the current physics system. Number one. <laughs> Multi-object physical properties assign or change. Number two, multi-object constraint setup. Number three, better support for 1D simulations like a rope or a wire. Better support for non-manifold geometry. Allow non-polygonal geometry to be a target for surface deform modifier. I use this method as a rope wire cuts approximation for high poly pro objects. Live long and prosper. <laughs> you too. <laughs> I um, but I guess it's very mo much more technical. Uh, Sebas, you know, so, so or what actually the, the the initial question? What what was the question? I know that it would be um, uh, to expect something. It's almost senseless to expect something like position-based particle simulation or finite element method. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think it's even possible? Is that position-based particle simulation? Um, I mean, because he's talking about finite element methods, so I think he's referring to all the uh, method that they use in the engineering software. Okay. And so implementing a blender in the nearest future, although there are some little improvements that could make complex setups much easier. Um, so all I can say basically is that as of now, there are no plans to develop anything for FEM, uh, and so okay. I guess this question is like a suggestion, like maybe, or just to keep it in mind. Sorry, just a suggestion of things that would be nice to have. Yeah, I mean, obviously, to, yeah, to would be super that. nice. Um, yeah, probably wouldn't be as performant as. Um, other systems because that's in essentially what um, computer graphics um, algorithms always try to do is to find a more simpler approach than the engineering one and so I don't know okay yeah uh, it's nice to keep it in mind so Damian keep in touch with the uh, physics development and stuff because it's nice to have a uh, different points of points of view and things that we, we maybe we didn't even hear about or cases you didn't even think about because you know mm -hmm. usually uh, you work on or based on what you are familiar with. So it's good to have this approach. Thank you. I, I definitely agree on the multi object editing part because um, yeah. the, the whole bullet rigid body system in Blender is actually super, super cool and super powerful. But I think where it's really suffering is that you can't uh, deal with a whole bunch of like a whole number of objects, like very, very nicely. I think in 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 two point seven nine there used to be this uh, this panel called the rigid body tools. I don't think it's there currently in two point eight, I but um, I I think I, I just hacked it in my two point eight Blender version. So I just brought all this over, and basically it's just a bunch of um, a bunch of operators that help you assign masses and assign uh, rigid body shapes on to a multitude of objects, and uh, I think like once we can deal with a huge number of objects like maybe based on behavior or uh, on, on just collections or like different patterns or search patterns or so that would be super 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 powerful like even with the existing uh capabilities that are there in blender yes 
No, it's everything now. It's a question. Everything, <laughs> everything now. It's a question for Sebas. What are your plans for the future? Shall I improving the mana flow or something really major? I think we all already answered this. The future is yeah, bright yeah. for particle systems, right? Future projects would be, of course, hair and um, always, obviously maintaining the fluid system and um, also um, implementing a connection or a bridge between the patch that Brecht just submitted. Yes. The, the volume patch. The volume. Yes. But also the um, man maintaining Manta flow, I think. From 2.82 to 2.83 is like almost night and day um, with all the optimization yeah, that you made. And... Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, super nice. Thank you for the question. Next question is Mille Porte. I guess it's also for you. Mantaflow versus Ember Gen. Hi, Paolo. Recently, Ember Gen mm -hmm. has been released in alpha and can do this real time. It's a video. And uh, what about Mantaflow? We'll be able to perform the same hey, way what's up, in, guys a short, in a short time. Uh, this um, in real time yeah I've, I've seen the examples from um ambergen as well and i've heard really good things about it and as far as i know and i think he's also answering it himself uh, yes. it's it's running on the gpu yes and so that's i guess i haven't seen the code but i guess that's the 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 reason why it's able to to run that quickly or in real time even um but is that something that's going to happen in Mantaflow? No. No. I don't think. I don't see that happening. Okay. Bonus question. I find to set up a rigid body constraints is not so intuitive. Set up rigid body constraints. Not so intuitive. Uh, I think a lot of people will agree <laughs> with that. But oh, yeah. But again, everything notes. Yay. Next uh, question. Jorge Zombie asks, Hi, Pablo. I'm a little lost in the everything notes reach and scope. I'm not even sure what a project that the project touches physics, but I didn't dare to ask this in ask this in the Gris Pencil and Sculpt videos. I think it's more related to physics. So the question. Can you give us a short everything notes for dummies description? What will be available as a note? Literally everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's a it's a good good question. Um I guess everything now is like the animation 2020 project that there's not just a one project it's like all kinds of projects that touches the uh, the everything nodes part right I think everything nodes it's an ambitious name but it it kind of is everything nodes from the um, particle systems to like um, well, now we have, of course, cycle is already there, but the compositor, the modeling, maybe parametric modeling could also be part of that. Modifiers, rigging, physics. It really, uh, the sky is the limit, but it's, it's a very, very long um, project. So it's, a, it's a, yeah. like animation notes, for example, that it's. I agree. And I forward. think the first um, um, use case for people to work with it. Would probably be the new particle system. Yeah. So once that's in Blender, um, I think it will make much more sense for people, um, or the, at least people will have a better sense of what we are trying to do with everything. Because then you can do particles and nodes, and maybe in a future iteration we can also do fluids with nodes or hair with nodes, and then anything. Like I remember kind of... Pablo Barro even uh, with the functions node branch, he made some changes and was doing brushes with nodes. Like a brush system made with uh, on, with nodes. I think that the the sky is the limit really in in, in yep. this. And uh, there is a the function nodes branch is the main branch where it's being worked on at the moment, and mm -hmm. it's available. There is a build from last Sunday actually um, that it keeps being updated, so you can actually already play with some of this uh, particle stuff. Next uh, question, Michael Campbell. Would it be possible to expose any parameter? from a node network to a top level node so that you after you create a complex network you could control just the necessary parameters without jumping into the network basically groups with all the parameters having the ability to be exposed you could also store presets to auto populate um, those exposed parameters yeah like making a ui for controlling high uh, complicated stuff i i think um that sh that is part of it right you shouldn't have to dive into a thousand nodes just to change one setting kind of groups 
kind of notice. Yeah, I mean, the, <clears throat> that feels like the, the, the best implementation of uh, the, the whole different projects that are going on, right? Yeah. With a, then, I mean, users could like make, oh, I, I made a, you know, a car asset and you can just, you know, drag a slider and have six wheels or 10 wheels or whatever. Um, yeah. Next question. Um, actually, <laughs> he edited it while I was uh, watching it. So I, when I saved it, he reloaded it. That's a nice, uh, nice trick. Who tried Ember Gen? Actually, we already talked about this. So now we're reaching the questions that don't have any votes. So I'm going to do this one and then jump to the bottom because those are the ones that were first asked. So this one is for Daniel. How much time, hours, or days would you estimate you invested into the groom for the tiger? Oh, that's, uh, that's a very good question <laughs> you even remember <laughs> it's yeah i too much. i think um yeah i think i worked on the project uh three months um so let's say three months let's say it's uh 30 days 30 times days. three that's uh 90 days and there's you no know, modeling texturing Grooming. sculpting uh, rigging, simulation, Animation. yeah, so it's, I mean, it, it actually went pretty fast, um, but mostly because of all the, you know, amazing development that um, Clement has done, done in Eevee, because um, I'd say that usually when, when I'm grooming, um, you have to sort of like in that other application, you have to do a render and see how it actually looks with all the ambient mean, occlusion and shadows and stuff like that. And it really saved a lot of time um, for the groom. So I'd say uh, guesstimate perhaps uh, four or perhaps five days, four or five days for the grooming. Cool. For the tiger. Okay. Four or five days. Sounds nice. uh, yeah, sounds Legit. <laughs> and a question for everyone. Uh, very interested, interested in hearing any tips or recommended tutorials on fur. Do you have off your top of your head like a, a go-to tutorial slash uh, or you just go watch the Weta digital <laughs> way of doing things and <laughs> try to translate it into Blender? Oh, that's a, it's a good question. I don't really have one uh, on top of my head. You can go to Cloud or Blender or Dora yeah. for that. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any hair training on the on the cloud? Like recently? No, because every time, like every time there's this question, there's like, hey, but there's gonna be this big change on the horizon, so we'll just wait for that. Mm. So and and that's why it never really happened. But uh but I think we do have some hair grooming stuff on the cloud. Yeah. But, but I'm pretty it's, sure it's a bit old. It's a bit uh, outdated, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or like in this case, like sculpting hair by uh, Julian, which is uh, more like a stylized hair. Um, so, or uh, this one set up that but it's actually like fake hair. Uh, the thing is that you did for a spring for animating with physics. The little... Mm, oh, yeah. That, things. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So um, next question. Well, actually, I said I was going to go to the bottom, but it was nice. How do you simulate muscles and bones moving the, beneath the skin? What system features will Blender need to make that possible? Uh, some people have done it already. Uh, but I There's think a bunch of add-ons, yeah. For, for doing that already. So, okay, let's go to the bottom. And let's do... We are five minutes till six, so let's do five more questions from the bottom. Hello, Pablo and all you lovely Blender peeps. This is about particles which I really enjoy playing with. I understand that this is getting an update. Yes, it is. In the particle settings and the render, you can have an option for line. This was a really nice feature when before 2.8 came along, but since 2.8, the option for line is there, but there are no settings to change it. Things like head, tail, trail count, and length. Ah, it's the particle settings for drawing lines. Uh, when looking at the manual, it doesn't even mention the line option. <laughs> Does it mean the line is end of life? I Yeah, I remember this line. I was I, I, Once I did a simulation of uh, like when you're soldering something and you have like psh, those sparkles, that I used it for that. Um, but um, yeah, I don't remember using it in 2.8. 
Is it even working? It's super old, yeah. I'm not even sure if that renders and cycles. Yeah. So I remember there is a... Uh, in, in Blender Internal, there was an option, but I don't remember. So yeah, good, good, I remember that nice. line stuff. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, next question. I have a technical question regarding cloth internal springs versus FEM. I love the new internal springs for squishy stuff. This new feature from 2.82. I've heard people say it's basically finite element modeling, probably simply because, as far as I can tell, FEM is the most common approach to simulate the formations in VFX, engineering, medical science. So, question. Are those methods actually related, or is the math completely different? But they just happen to produce similar looking results sometimes. I guess that was this one is for you. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's asking for the difference between between these two, with springs. internal springs uh, versus FEM. Do you think that uh, are you familiar with those? I'm like, actually not quite. Uh, sure. The technical side. Maybe we need the Sebastian, the other Sebastian, Sebastian Paragor, yeah, our yeah. work, the other Sebastian in at the Blender Studio, uh, to answer that one. Next. Yeah, uh, I think this is a question for him. Yeah, and the question, the other one is: uh, Is there still a distinct use case for the old soft body physics? Andy, do you think these... The old soft body. Um, I'm not sure. Now that the internal springs are there, um, we, we did use the old soft body thing for spring, where we actually simulated uh, all the background branches, like we have branches falling off. Yeah. And uh, we we actually used mesh to form to project uh, like a, a very simplified geometry around them. And then we used uh, soft bodies to simulate rigid body on those uh, on those branches, soft body to simulate rigid them... body. <laughs> yeah, because because they needed a little bit of a, a springiness, uh, no pun intended, to <laughs> like they bounce on the ground, and uh, mm. we tried cloth and it just exploded. And then yes, the old soft body system kind of just worked, but I think now the the new internal like the the internal spring system would we'll actually job. be a replacement of that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So uh, there was five for number three. Question number three. Um, <clears throat> Sebas, how straightforward was integrating Manaflow into Blender? Did it help that it was made part of the Blender code base itself? Would it be better just as an add-on or um, how straightforward? So how s I mean, yeah, straightforward. I mean, I wouldn't say like uh, any any physics project is everything but straightforward so it's always <laughs> it's not like this week and i'm gonna just add a new physics system yeah. replace so, not add replace even so it's always like always a struggle but um you have to find your ways around it and the question did it help that it made was part of a blender code base i would say yes um because there are certain function calls that are only available um in the actual Blender code base and not in the add-on, uh, so that's actually quite helpful. Um, yeah, because his question says that there is a lot of great open source code that they that mm -hmm. can do already amazing things, and keeping it modular seems like a good design in general. So, not like integrating. Yeah, I, but... I, I, I would, I would say it's um, it's good to have both approaches as we have right now. We have the Python um, API in Blender, which is quite nice. Um, but then on the other hand, I think it's always um, good to have something that works out of the box so that users don't have to fiddle with um, some plugin. Yeah. So that Blender has at least one good fluid simulator, for example, or one good cloth simulator. Yeah. And if there is an additional add on that can do feature X better, then I mean, that's great. Yeah, and also it keeps the Blender code base a bit lighter if you don't implement those. Like somebody mentioned yesterday uh, in the, another live stream <laughs> that I had it, the OpenCV for doing some calculations from mm. detection and stuff, but <laughs> the size is like 200 megabytes. So Blender will go, if we if this was implemented, like the whole thing, uh, from 200 to 400 megs. Um, would double in size. Yeah. Um, but of course, you don't always need the whole thing. But uh, next, um, it's also part of the same question. Any library software projects that you th you would like to uh, that you would like to interface with Blender, like physics, machine learning? 
Any um, library that you think is like, ah, oh, that wouldn't make a good fit? I don't have any particular libraries in mind, but uh, I like what he's saying about machine learning based smoke simulations. Yeah. Because that's actually um, something that I think will be very interesting in the future. Um, that would also so make it heavier. Any, yeah. So any library that is able to do these kind of simulations would also be interested interesting for Blender. So Yeah. And um let me just say that having Manta Flow fluids and bullet rigid bodies and cycles rendering just looks more legit than no name homebrew code hidden away in the Blender rep. <laughs> yeah, but that's that's just like PR. <laughs> Next question, Sebas again for you, your popular <laughs> boy. <laughs> Why were there so many bugs in Manta Flow right in the official 2.82? <laughs> Um, uh, that's actually a good question. Is um, uh, you, you had the answer, feel free to if, say like no user testing or <laughs> like if developers had the answer to why is there this many bugs in this piece of software? Um, I mean, we wouldn't have the bugs, so we always always do our best. But like, yeah, if stuff gets com uh, complex, it just uh, happens. Yeah, and also remember, guys, to test the like asking people, users, to test, report, test, report. That is the way to make things uh, always more stable. And next um, question so was number two. Number two. Uh, hi guys, I have two questions on Mantaflow. In the liquid panel, there is a simulation method, but it's only flip solver. And there are other methods. Are there other methods you want to add besides flip? Yes, there are. Um, there's actually. Uh... A method called APIC. I think you can just Google it's APIC, and that would be really interesting to have for API. For APIC. APAC. AP APIC. APIC uh, fluids. And then yes, search for fluid or simulation. Yeah, simulation. Then, okay. So this is something that will be added in the future. Yes. So uh, that's why I added the the option for it. And is there any plans to add CUDA integrations in Mantaflow? Uh, not right now, no. And the last question by Paolo. I really appreciate the new fluid simulation documentation on the Blender manual. Who you know who made it? This boy here. He not only made yeah. the Blender Mantaflow integration himself, but also the documentation. How good can you have it? Like, come on, that should be the artist's task to write documentation. I mean, I really have to say, like, it's super nice that you took your time to write the documentation and also to make those uh, pictures because, like, at the end of the day, that's what you need, like, as a reference. Mm -hmm. Because you, like, those, like, sometimes there are these buttons that don't, mm -hmm. like, they, they say something very weird and you don't know what it's doing. So it's actually very cool to have something visual yeah, I think so. This, I think this is, this is something that um, I think we developers also have to focus much more on. That the documentation goes hand in hand with the development. So as we add new features, documentation needs to be updated. So. Awesome! Thank you very much. And um, I think that was yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like let's let's clap, 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 clap. And. Uh, <laughs> The last, um, um, actually, that was that was the last comment. It's, it will be also wonderful to see an official video course on the Blender Cloud to better learn the best workflow. Just an idea. I think that was for for sure. us, uh, Andy. <laughs> well, anybody, if you want to make a tutorial and donate to Blender Cloud, you're well, more than welcome. And Daniel, I really learned so much from your Blender conference speech. Thanks. So you got a fan <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, I'm happy that you know it's um, helping someone out. Yeah, it's it's on YouTube, right? Oh yeah, um, and Annie's talk as well. It was a lot of uh, yes. yeah. It was a really fun time coming down to Amsterdam and meeting everyone. Yeah, you're coming back if we if it's possible. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, I it's it's like uh, once you go there, it, it's, it's hard to imagine not going the next year. Ah, uh, nice. Good to hear. Yeah, you know. Karaoke. Karaoke, I must happen again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that was the last question. Sorry, guys, for not uh, answering all the other questions, but I already took too much time from my guests here and super happy that you found the time to uh, drop by the show here. I hope it was fun for you to chat and uh, 
I really look forward to all the work you guys are doing and for the future of... Oh, hey, hey! A new guest appear. A wild spring appear. <laughs> <laughs> that is huge. How big is that? Um, it's like like your face. This. Yeah, like your head. Wow. It's face size. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's massive. <laughs> awesome. Super cool. <laughs> spring. I have a little rocket with me here. A rocket. Nice. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> so time to show the toys. All right. Uh, so thank you guys for uh, dropping by. I hope we can do this sometime again. If you don't mind, it will be. I mean, if we are gonna be locked down until the f June first <laughs> in the Netherlands, June first is uh, the end so far and the end of the quarantine. So <laughs> I, I will try to find more guests, but I might have to call you again at some point. So sure. Yeah. Yeah. Love to join again. Awesome. I'm happy well, happy to join again. Yeah. Ah, so nice. Cool. So let's think of ideas for new episodes. I mean, your all your all the work you guys are doing, all three of you is amazing. So I could just have a one show for each one of you. Let's. You see. are amazing, Pablo. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> ah you. <laughs> ah. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. I will uh, have to say goodbye to you, but I will talk to you very, very, very soon online. Thank you, guys, here. Yeah. And I will. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, cheers. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. See you. And I jump into full size here just to say goodbye to all of you guys that were hanging out here in the community. Thank you for your questions. Sorry to not get to answer all of them, but uh, the, the talk was just too interesting to see all these approaches for hair is very exciting. Isn't it exciting that the future of hair grooming in Blender is in the hands of great developers and amazing artists that are like really with a passion for for blender and using it like like making like daniel bites it he has a full-time job he has kids but he finds the time to for three months to work on this tiger demo releases the file releases the to the, like how he made it and and even shares everything and just 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 awesome so those people are the ones that make the uh, community is so special and it's the same as you watching this and keeping up to date with the with this i think we have a an amazing community so let's let's do it again tomorrow i have an npr special npr show the author of the current splash screen 2.82 the dudes is gonna be with us and janine also gonna be with us who recently had a tweet that went super viral so stay tuned for npr talk tomorrow on this channel same place same time it's been a pleasure in five four three two one i'm gonna say goodbye and see you tomorrow take care wash your hands stay home bye